This is Movie Tone. Lionel Gamlin reporting. Here they are, some of the immense crowds on their way to Wembley Stadium to enjoy the pageantry, the music and the ceremony on the day of the opening of the Olympic Games. Mercifully, the English summer had arrived a couple of days earlier and the weather was blazing hot for the start of the 14th modern Olympiad. This was the second time that London had welcomed athletes and their supporters for such an outstanding event in the world of sport. And the scene at Wembley was one that will long be remembered by all who were present. After tremendous cheering had greeted the arrival of the King, his Majesty went down to the arena, accompanied by Mr. Ed Strom, President of the International Olympic Committee, and Lord Burley, Chairman of the Organising Committee. Members of both committees were presented. Then the march of the competing teams. According to modern custom, they were led by Greece, the country where Olympic Games originated some 800 years BC. Apart from Greece and Great Britain, who as hosts came last, the teams marched in alphabetical order. It was a great welcome for Czechoslovakia. After all, true sport knows no political frontiers. But of course, every contingent, large or small, from Europe or distant climes, received a real ovation from the spectators, among whom were members of the royal family, royal guests from abroad, and many world famous people. Great Britain, as I say, came last, adding a large quota to the impressive array of athletes who totaled 6,000. It was Lord Burley who invited the King to perform the opening. But it is our firm belief that you are kindling a torch, the light from which will travel to the uttermost corners of the earth. A torch of that ageless and heartfelt prayer of mankind throughout the world for peace and goodwill amongst men. Your Majesty, I humbly ask you to declare the Olympic Games of 1948 open. I proclaim open the Olympic Games of London, celebrating as the 14th Olympiad of the modern era. The release of 7,000 pigeons recalled the days in ancient Greece when their arrival in all parts of that country signalled that the games had begun and that there must be peace in the land. The arrival of the Olympic torch was dramatically effective. The flame, which had been brought from Greece by a succession of runners, was now carried round the arena by the tall figure of John Mark at Cambridge Blue. The bowl was kindled with the flame, which is to burn throughout the Olympics. The choir and the mass bands of the Brigade of Guards were conducted by Sir Malcolm Sargent. The Olympic Oath was spoken on behalf of competitors by that brilliant veteran hurdler, Wing Commander Donald Finlay. We swear that we will take part in the Olympic Games in loyal competition 
respecting the regulations which govern them and desirous of participating in them in the true spirit of sportsmanship for the honor of our country and for the glory of sport. On the second day, the crowds must have been melting even if the athletes were not. The women's discus throwing was the first final. Here's Pong Sik Pak from Korea. The world record for this event, by the way, is over 158 feet. The Olympic record, some two feet less. This is a Polish competitor in action. And here's the winner, Mademoiselle Ostermeyer from France. Her best throw was 137 feet, six and a half inches. Spectators saw a thrilling heat in the second round of the men's 100 meters sprint. Alistair McCorkadale of the Guards, number 36, was only just beaten by the American top-notcher Mel Patton, 71, who won by a tenth of a second in 10.4, Olympic record 10.3. McCorkadale beat him in the final, finishing fourth. And now the final of the high jump. Alan Patterson, 413, the young British star, cleared six feet three inches, but failed after that. Gurnam Singh also failed to win a place. The winner was Winter from Australia, who cleared six feet six, two inches under the Olympic and five less than the world record. The most sensational event of the day was the 10,000 metres, for which there was a big field. It wasn't the sort of afternoon I'd have chosen myself for a race of nearly six and a quarter miles, but a record was broken just the same. Twenty-five laps had to be run, Here's Haino, 238, the famous Finnish athlete, passing Zatopek, 203, the Czech. Many people expected Haino to win, but after running close by his rival, he presently went off the track and gave up. Zatopek continued to put on the pace and not unnaturally received great encouragement from compatriots. He almost lapped the entire field in the course of the race, and it was a real thrill to watch his brilliant performance. Finishing with a great burst of speed, Zatopek set the new Olympic time of 29 minutes 59.6 seconds against the previous record of 30 minutes 11.4 made at Los Angeles in 1932. A great achievement, especially when you remember what a scorching hot day it was.